Welcome to Pre-Calc 12, Chapter 5.6. Today we're going to look at analyzing logarithmic functions. Recall the change of base is log b of x is equal to log a of x divided by log a of b. So if we're given a question, change log 88 to log base 2. And log base 2 is used in computing science quite frequently, so it's abbreviated LG. So if you see LG, it's implied that it's log base 2. Anyways, let's proceed with this. Log 2 of 88 is log 88 over log 2. Okay, so we use the base 10 here to do the conversion. So A, in this case, A equals 10, B equals 2. Now we're going to go back to do transformations again. So if we have y minus k is equal to c log a of d times x minus h, and we have the restrictions a is greater than 0, c and d cannot be 0. And this is of the simple function y is equal to log a of x. These coefficients are the same as the ones for exponential transformation. We have C as vertical scale and flip, D as horizontal scale and flip, H is horizontal shift as before, and K is vertical shift as before. And if we look at logarithm, what is the easiest point to transform? Well, that's log A of one, and that's zero. So our point that we're transforming is one comma zero. And since we have the same transform as before, our original x and y gets transformed into x over d plus h and c times y plus k. So if you're going to use a table of values, you use this to do your transformation. Let's look at an example. Draw the image of y is equal to log 2 of x, with the transform y equals 3 log 2 of 2 times x minus 1 minus 4. So we have 3, and that's a stretch. We have 2, that's a compress. h is 1, and that's to the right. And k is negative 4, that's down. Okay, so we have 1, right, negative 4, down, 2 as a compressed, and 3 as a vertical stretch. So let's take some points. We have 1, 0. Log 2 of 2 is 1. Log 2 of 4 is 2. Log 2 of 8 is 3. So always try to pick the integer values to transform because they're going to be the easiest. And we can use the table of values. This becomes 1 half plus 1, 3 times 0 minus 4, and that's just 3 halves minus 4. This one is 2 over 2 plus 1, 3 times 1 minus 4. That simplifies to 2, negative 1. This is 4 over 2 plus 1, 3 times 2 minus 4, and this simplifies to 3, 2. Finally, we have 8 over 2 plus 1, and 3 times 3 minus 4, and that simplifies to 5, 5. Okay, so 1, 0 goes to 3 halves negative 4. So 3 halves negative 4, it goes there. 2, 1 goes to 2, negative 1. So that simply goes down to there. 4, 2 goes to 3, 2. So that goes there. And 8, 3 goes to 5, 5. And that's up here. 
So our curve looks like this. Now on the definitions, we have image and pre-image. I want to tighten up those definitions a little bit. So the pre-image is a subset of the domain that is used to generate an image. So if we say this purple line is the pre-image, so it's not the whole domain, it's a subset of the domain. We call this the pre-image. Then the image is the subset that matches that pre-image. So the image is only on this interval. Here's the final definitions. Image is simply the result of the subset of the transformation. And the pre-image is the subset of the domain that is used to generate an image. Let's look at another example. A transformation image of the graph y is equal to f of x is represented by the equation y plus 3 equals negative 2 log 2 of negative 4 times x plus 2 in brackets. The point negative 4, negative 9 lies on the image of the graph. What is the corresponding point on the graph of y is equal to f of x? Okay, so we need to identify the coefficients or constants. C equals negative 2, D equals negative 4, H equals negative 2, and K equals negative 3. So you can recall that the pre image equals D times the image minus H. If you can't remember this, you can use the formula XP over D plus h equals xi, and then solve for xp. And this is a two-step algebra process. And the other one is yp equals yi minus k over c. And recall, we derived that from cyp plus k equals yi. Again, that's a two-step algebra problem. So now we go ahead and plug in the values, xp equals negative 4, and the x value of the point is negative 4 minus negative 2. And as always, when you're substituting, use brackets, otherwise you will get a negative error. And the value is 8. yp, we have negative 9 minus negative 3 over negative 2, and that's negative 6 over negative 2, and that is 3. So we write the pre-image of negative 4, negative 9 is 8, 3. So be careful. Make sure you know where your point is coming from, whether it's from the image or the pre-image, so that you use the correct formula. Here's another example. Determine the logarithmic transformation function of the given pre-image f and the image g using only scaling and flipping. Okay, so we have a and a prime. And you have to be careful here. Use only the variables that are given, otherwise there will be a linear system of more than two variables. And because we're told we're only using scaling and flipping, we should only be solving for C and D, not H and K. H and K in this case will be zero because it's not factored into the question. So we have A equal to XA and YA, and we have A prime equal to x a prime and y a prime. And we have x a prime equal to x a over d. So we have negative 5 equals negative 2.5 over d. d equals negative 2.5 over negative 5. And that is a half. 
we have y a prime equal to c y a. So negative 1 equals c times 1. So c equals negative 1. And our answer is g of x equals negative f of 1 half x. Remember, this is c f of dx. So when we use this technique, does it matter what kind of function that we are transforming? Does it matter whether it's exponential, logarithmic, polynomial, rational? And the answer is no. We can still use the same formulas. One last example. Determine the logarithmic transformation of the function given the pre-image f and the image g. And we are given two sets of points, a and a prime, b and b prime. The clue here is we have a system of linear equations. We're going to have to solve for all four coefficients, c, d, h, and k. So we have x prime equal to x over d plus h. We'll substitute a in and a prime. So we have 6 equals 4 over d plus h. And for b and b prime, we have 8 equals 8 over d plus h. Doesn't matter which one we work with. We'll solve for h. So h here is 8 minus 8 over d. We substitute this in over here. So we have 6 equals 4 over d plus 8 minus 8 over d. We move the 8 over to the other side. So we have negative 2 equals. And now we have a common denominator here. So we just add. That's minus 4 over d. So d equals 2. We substitute this back into the other equation. h equals 8 minus 8 over 2, because d equals 2. So we have 8 minus 4, and this is equal to 4. Let's work with y's. We have y prime equals cy plus k. With a and a prime, we have negative 3 equals c times 2 plus k. And for the b and b prime, we have negative 6 equals c times 3 plus k. Let's solve for k over here. We have k equals negative 6 minus 3c. We substitute it into here. We have negative 3 equals 2c minus 6 minus 3c. We move the negative 6 over to this side. We get 3 equals negative c. Therefore, c equals negative 3. We substitute back this way. We get k equals negative 6 minus 3 times negative 3. Therefore, k equals negative 6 plus 9. And we have k is equal to 3. So we solve all four coefficients. Therefore, g of x equals negative 3 f of 2 times x minus 4 plus 3. Remember, the general form is c times f of d times x minus h plus k. And that completes this lesson.